So we are finally talking about models in hydrology. Models are ubiquitous in science, are uh, maybe the, the main tool of uh, science in, in nowadays, but um, saying that we have underst understood what they are and how they work is, is, not, completely tr is not completely true. What we can uh, see is that even in philosophical literature about the topics, there are a lot of models. There is a taxonomy of model. There are mathematical model, phenomenological model, theoretical model, and so on. Uh, everyone is used to explain a different part of the of the science or uh, or a phenomena. Um, they are not exactly in the same domain. Um, so, but there is no a, a general understanding of the whole things, and maybe it's not even necessary. Um, what are going to to do models? Models are going to represent phenomena, um, and obviously, this this implies that we know what phenomena are, and. Um, we can say that phenomena are uh, stable and general features of the world, or uh, uh, maybe something that we can measure, observe, and measure. Uh, anyhow, this world, actually, when I am saying that, uh, I am thinking that needs a definition, and maybe different people, different scientists, have different perceptions of what they are. But, you know, I have to be uh, relaxed on that. Um, I am a scientist and, yeah, I can raise all questions about the topics, but at the end, the, 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 my goal is to build a model. And um, being actually a little bit unaware of what it is, what it is is what I do. Uh, we have any, as I said, different type of models, but uh, we have good examples. For instance, the, the Bohr model of an atom, the billiard used in physics everywhere, um, the a scale model, a, a physical model of a bridge of a car, of everything, uh, models in economy, models in, as a model, Lorentz models of the atmosphere, uh, all of these are uh, um, examples of models that everyone more or less ha has uh, known something about in his life, on our life, and are different stuff that starts start from different uh, with different purposes in in different ways. In principle, uh, talking about model um, in my mind is talking about mathematics. But uh, mathematics n doesn't need to be involved necessarily. If, for instance, when we have a reproduction of analogical models that uh, are just reproduction of, the be of what we think is the behavior of a system. Um, are the model just linguistic representation of reality or something different? Uh, and uh, on, on another side, are we doing this modeling because we have the brain made in, in this way? Uh, and uh, so there is a substantial difference between reality and, uh, and our modeling, and this difference is just due to the way we are done. Uh, all of these are uh, um, very interesting questions uh, and the deeper questions, and uh, it's not unuseful to uh, to dig a little on, on them. But um, in, in this in in this in this context, uh, we left all this interesting question aside. In any case, the uh, perception is the model is anyway a simplification. Uh, not just hydrological models, but every model. We have reality, which is on the right here, and uh, our model is, uh, is some kind of a, 
a simplified mm, version of it. And um, we have to manifest a, a ability to uh, to represent uh, in, in we have to do some ability of representation actually this is uh, in a graphic ability more or less but it could be of other types um, one important things one basic thing is that uh, our models are always idealized um, we have a different type of idealization, for instance, the Galilean view, um, meaning that uh, this is the, the inclined plane that uh, a reconstruction of the inclined claim, a plane that Galileo used in his experiments. And um, when he, he used his experiment, actually, this, this is also a model of reality of a certain phenomenon, in a sense, the physical part of it. And, uh, but uh, one interesting thing to, to, to bring to our attention is that uh, Galileo was uh, abstracting, was using point masses, and we have no points, M uh, moving of frictionless planes, and this is not true. And uh, so in, in other uh, env environment, uh, some assumptions are made that are clearly unphysical or distorts distort the reality. Isolated populations that do not exist, and so on. We have uh, we will call the, this distortion of reality uh, uh, with simplification of reality that makes the the phenomena tractable. Uh, we have also another type of idealization, which is more or less called the Aristotelian view in, in philosophy, and uh, which is stripping away things that are not considered important in, when we do a model. For instance, where we make this a ball uh, run on the inclined plane, we, are, we don't care if it is red, blue, or green or if it hot or warm or cold up to a point obviously because we know that uh, heating in a sense can change the shape of the ball and so it can have dynamical effects but we are stripping away away uh, concepts that uh, we think are not useful to our modeling so wh where are we Look at that at the, uh, at the constellation, Orion constellation with Betelgeuse over there, which is probably exploding in a supernova sometimes. We have nature outside it. This is not discussed in science. It's a, a, an axiom that you have something to explore. Um, we can get a representation of what is outside uh, first through our senses, our view, our hearing, our touching, but uh, in, in science through measures, measurement in any kind of measurement, even those kinds of measures that looks like qualitative are a fundamental thing. Then we have a, a, a description or a model of what we of the of the data of the what we see. When once we have the model, we st we actually study the model. That is another point, uh, fundamental point of view. We are not uh, exactly studying nature, but uh, in science we are studying the models. Uh, taking out conclusions out of the models and then we are verifying and validate against reality. Veri verification and validation actually are not exactly the same concept 
a would merit to be um, discussed a little bit more, but we don't do here. In doing all of these, Galileo signed some point, some remarkable point. Uh, Galileo says that uh, uh, gave a direction uh, in saying to us that we have to execute experiments. What are experiments? Experiments are artifacts that are themselves uh, models of the reality and extract some ideal behavior of the system. And uh, in a Galilean experience anyway, all the elements that control the dynamics of the experiment are rigorously controlled and measured as, as, as well as it is possible. Another thing is the experiment should be re reproducible, meaning we don't get a, 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 a absolute knowledge of what is going on in the world. But with respect to that experiment, as soon as we have performed it in a nice way, uh, in a proper way, uh, we can reproduce and reproduce. And if we obtain always the same result, uh, we are going to getting a pattern, and from the pattern we are uh, determine, uh, determining a law and the law is the model of reality that we come out later on. Maybe we can put together a lot of laws and make a theory and uh, make general uh, general inferences. And uh, in, the, in this case, uh, we are gaining some more knowledge then. But the passages, the passages are actually not so trivial as it could appear. It's not like a mechanics of... Uh, doing experiments and getting out the truth and getting out. All is at the light of statistics. We have to repeat experiments to know where. And uh, statistics is prone to error. But possibly this is a way to go. Another point, another remarkable point in, in the Galilean view is that uh, we have to translate our knowledge in some for symbolic formal language, meaning they call mathematics. And uh, don't enter here if you don't know mathematics. Mathematics in a wide sense, actually, because mathematics is a, a formal language that treats numbers, actually, but they can treat also symbols that uh, brings us from a premise to a conclusion in, in, in a consequential way. It allows to do calculations. So the experiment is not a, a sufficient alone. We need to formalize the things. And, um, and so the main, the main elements in the Galilean view is that the experiment will be controllable, measured, reproducible and translatable in some formal language. If something is not measure, measurable, you have to do measure you, to make it becoming measurable. And uh, if you there is no a mathematics for that phenomena, you have to create a mathematics for that phenomena. The classical view of doing models, is that you can separate or you are analyzing a variable. And this is also a concept that you have to introduce. When you introduce measurements, you also introduce the concept of variables. And uh, in an experiment, you are analyzing how one single, maybe in an ideal setup, uh, one single variable is going on. And uh, you can perform an experiment in which all this, all, only this variable is changing. The other one are all controlled. That's the meaning of control that I used before. And uh, maybe you can also do a set of experiments, sometimes are thought experiments, not just a physical experiment in which you repeat the, your experience 
uh, in where you change all the stuff that you can change, but not the, the things that you want to, to test. So this is the famous experiment of uh, weights uh, uh, down the, the Pisa Tower and um, to verify that the for gravity, force of gravity depends just uh, on the weight of the, of the bodies and not on other stuff. And actually there is a very tr tricky stuff because we, have, we know now that we have uh, the resistance of the atmospheres and so on. So you have to read through your experiment and this is not really easy. So we have experiments, but observation are important too. Hydrologists, as well as astronomers of any other science, cannot usually build, uh, uh, build uh, the, their experiment. Their experiment is just what happens in nature. We have not uh, the heart be a second earth to do experiments or where we can manage it is uh, actually outside of our capabilities. And so we do not perform usually Galilean experiments. We just uh, observe what is going on. And uh, because we cannot separate one single element, like the discharge of a river, for instance, we have to try to understand which are all the variables affecting affecting the discharge and um, so we have to be more uh, we, we are prone to more error things just happens and uh, we cannot repeat you most of the time our experiment we have to read through observation to see to s single out those uh, things that looks like the same um, in Galileo's idea, our experiments are very much uncontrolled. And our experiment usually measure values that are dumb and noisy. We don't look at the, at the rainfall here. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> look at the rainfall. And th this rainfall is then noisy. Everything is varying, and we this is the yearly, uh, re, uh, re, uh, the the December rainfall in uh, UK year by year. But assume that we take hourly rainfall, that we get even more variation on that. This is a, is a mess. So uh, we, we, are, we, are, we are not just having models of the phenomena, we also need to have models of the data. We have to get out something of this variability before we are really able to analyze that. Actually, we have to think that there is the model here in the, my example of before and uh, what I call reality actually is not reality, but it's just data about reality. So we have data in this case is a picture and uh, our picture is the data about reality, uh, which is a kind of a model of reality a model of the data and we match the model of the data to the model uh, that we are going to do. So are we completely lost in this, in this thing? No, we are not completely lost. Uh, for sure, uh, physics uh, uh, makes some direction to us. Um, for hydrology, uh, the classical law of physics are valid including thermodynamics actually, because we have phase transitions when we go from uh, liquid water to water vapor in evaporation or vice versa, we go to liquid water to ice uh, when we have snow or, or, or snowfall. 
And we have also mass conservation, energy dissipation, energy conservation, energy transformation as guiding law. Momentum conservation and dissipation. So our theory at the beginning, if we have a, a, a core of the theory is that that must be true. And uh, are the true, uh, and we have to think that they are the law of the universe, they are not going to change. But even if we do, uh, we do, we, we do this statement, this is not so easy because uh, uh, sometimes the condition, or, or at least it is easy when the conditions are uh, fine, where the, we, have, we have not such a lot of variability, we have uniformity, like. In, in this painting by Rochko. Just two or three colors maybe. The domain is quite uniform in space. And so uh, we, we can think that we can catch a model of, the, of this painting. Maybe it is not so true. But we have other domains. If you have a heterogeneous domain, we actually don't know from where heterogeneous comes from. We can match idea, but we just see out and we see that everything is heterogeneous. And so we have to deal with heterogeneity. In the first case, we have the model. To model the information, we need just a few numbers. Three numbers, for instance for each, uh, which is an, uh, an approximate model, uh, three numbers of uh, uh, representing the colors of the Rochko painting. But you know, in some cases, this approximation is another concept which is really important in modeling. Three numbers can be okay. Uh, for the, uh, the other painting by Shimamoto, we need a lot of more numbers. There are, unfortunately, there are num there are uh, uh, some places where the numbers are really uh, some phenomena where the numbers are really too much. Some sequences of data are too much information rich, and we are actually not able to strip out any of them. We are not able to simplify the reality to do our data model and then to do the, our model. Or, or, or at least when it is a, this is absolutely true and we have a complete randomness, we have a model's improbability. So the mathematics so of probability come out and help us, or statistics sometimes. But we have a lot of intermediate cases which is not uh, easy to, to deal with. Even classical, classical is not so trivial because uh, turbulence, for instance, is the epitome, the, the standard for it. We know the equation, but we know the, we don't know, uh, we know the rules, what is, is, is ruling um, uh, turbulence, but we are not going to be able to solve the rules because the these rules manifest a lot, of, uh, such a, a huge variability that we are not going to, to being able to, to deal mathematically or computationally. And even more, hydrology includes ecosystem, and ecosystem are active agent, agents of the hydrological cycle. And so uh, all the, stu the studies on the critical zone are uh, uh, facing to that and uh, let's say even more from the engineering point of view that has to deal with humans uh, when ecosystem and humans acts they are humans acting against the physical law no they are acting according to the physical law but this brings complications in modeling then that hides sometimes the major finding in physics that allows us to go, let's say, from the microphysics of the phenomena to the, to the macrophysics of the catchments. So a partial summary is that um, 
uh, we have the perceptions that uh, Newtonian, Newtonian mechanics um, and classical physics are not are, are powerful, powerful tools. But we cannot simply start from that to to get the hydrological model. We must use them, but we we have to apply uh, in, in kind of a crea creative way. Our feeling is that uh, the at least when we go to the largest clay, not from the leaf, but 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 we go to the catchments. We have a lot of uh, phenomena inside, and we can uh, have certain patterns that you are not able to deduct mathematically from the very small uh, behavior even if even because we are not going to able to measure enough all the and control enough the the whole tools that are needed for that the same as uh, one, nobody wants to describe a ca the car by uh, describing the, the motion of its atoms or the life of a, of a living being from its molecules. Knowing that helps us, but is not definitely giving all the answers that we need. In the descriptions of models, so trying to convert to some uh, more concrete stuff, uh, we have at least two axes. One is the complexity axis uh, that, let's say, goes from minus to, to plus complexity uh, as, a, as a drop, where uh, <clears throat> complexity and uh, uh, computational, whatever it is, complexity and computational time increase for going from the bottom up. And uh, more complexity means, in this case, more physical processes take into account in a, not necessarily in a mechanistic way, but we have more processes, more variables, more degree of freedom. Uh, we have also uh, scales. When, the, when, when we are increase complexity, by mm, naturally we are not able to deal with, the, with all of it, so we have to reduce, reduce the spatial scale at which we are going to, to work. So we have to say that we don't have a measure of complexity, so the, mm, this axis is quite qualitative. And, um, but, you know, I think we I think that in any case it says something. Say something also on the type of approach we have with these models because um let's say that um, uh, more or less uh, you pretend for the more complex models to have parameters that are measured and um, even if this is not always true and a while uh, when you go to more simplistic or heuristic models, you you put inside the uh, parameters to uh, that you have to fit to data to to get the right answer. So you have a let's say an ex post explanation of the models, and uh, actually we don't have uh, ways usually to infer these parameters at larger scale. Also because, as we said before, we have a lot of uh, heterogeneity among the different observations that we have. So, so far we are in the middle of these things to understand how, uh, what is really complexity, what is, how we can manage, and we, how are those emergent properties that we are uh, talking about. We have also another axis, which is the axis of the special description of the models. Uh, we have zero-dimensional models, meaning more, more or less they are point-wise model, or uh, we have hydrologic response unit HRUs models, 
meaning that we uh, sample the, the space in just a few points and we group together areas that we think have the same hydrological behavior. Um, this is a long story, actually, if the, what are the areas that behave hydrologically in a similar way. And, uh, but um, uh, from a practical point of view, this is a, 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 an, accepted, uh, an accepted condition, which we can group models, subcatchments, part hill slopes, and treat as they were a single point. And then we can connect this whole single point together and to have a kind of a special uh, portrait of the, what is going on, but as accumulation of single points, not of a continuum. Then we have the continuum. We have uh, models that um, pretend to describe the, con the continuums, um, what is going on in the, in the continuum, but actually when we go to the computers to solve them, we have to discretize and discretize this continuum. At the same time, the discontinuum is not always three-dimensional. It can be two-dimensional or one-dimensional, uh, depending on uh, the conceptualization of the model that we do. So even also in the, in the spatial uh, space, we have a lot of solutions. Um, uh, this lot of solutions depends also have an, an impact on the mathematics that describe it. Uh, let's say that uh, statistics is more or less ubiquitous. In many parts of, of this model, even if they are um, mathematics of other types from which I will talking about a, a little in a second, um, the statistics uh, is used for uh, parameter de determinations, for interpreting and, and verifying the, and validate models later on, but also to supply some part of the models that are not modelized at the dynamical systems. In any case, the mathematics that uh, is implied by the spatial resolution is in the first case of the zero dimensional model is um, uh, ordinary differential equation. Where you, at the limited, just one ordinary differential equation that uh, evolve the dynamics of the of the stuff that we are talking about, or we have system of systems of ODEs in the more complicated cases that are going towards the the discretized continuum, and we will be um, focusing on on these models uh, later on and uh, uh, showing how we can represent them. And fi uh, finally, we have PDEs partial differential equations. Um, and um, at the very core, the uh, laws of conservation kind of say that uh, we should use uh, PDEs, um, at least at the, at the present status of mathematics, or um, some other, let's say, reduction of PDEs like uh, other discrete state models or, but continuing time or uh, and so on and um, there is also a difference in in in, in these things which is not uh, secondary when we treat to PDEs and we treat with the, the, the continuum the space continuum as a continuum you we usually try to um, um, characterize the fluxes among the points uh, with the gradients of uh, quantities. When we move to the left to more conceptualized models, we have we have um, we we need to have different types of uh, conceptualization of the fluxes, and uh, is an, an assumption is central that maybe I did not uh, emphasize enough in this in these slides, which is that. Uh, we assume that the fluxes at, at that point, at a certain point, are just function of the state, the state variable of the model, meaning, for instance, the quantity of water which is inside a certain area or so, which is not given from gra for granted actually, and has to be verified a posteriori. A kind of uh, um, 
representation from the Rakowitz and Clark recent paper of all this model in this space is this one, well, 23 of uh, the most used models in the in, in literature, maybe not all, of, for sure not all of them, and maybe not all of the uh, of the important ones, uh, but uh, a reasonable sample is represented like this in chunks of models that are kind of uh, uh, represented be, uh, in with also other classification of the of the spatial resolution, lumped, catchment, subcatchment, distributed, semi-distributed, hill slope, plot, distributed, uh, distributed, and so on, looking at the different spatial scales. Uh, I don't agree with the idea that all these models are really uh, comparable because many of these models were actually born uh, with different purposes in mind. And uh, they also have different prognostic capabilities. The models on, on, the, on the left side and low left sides, especially, are uh, uh, targeted to, uh, to, to, to get some variables, for instance, discharge, or for instance, just evapotranspiration, but uh, with a simple bucket model. We don't know yet what it is, bucket model, but we will see later. And, um, and other, other models uh, uh, are going to give uh, several prognostic variables of several different processes. And so um, there is a, a, a more or less a phrase that is used when commenting this model. It says, ah, a complex model is not going to give a more... Uh, exact results than a simple model. I actually have built and programmed uh, models of diff of the, 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 on the whole range of types, I would say. But this is not exactly true because uh, when uh, what you ask to a, a complex model is a little bit different to what you ask to a simple model. To a simple model, you ask just to mimic one variable to this, uh, the complex model, you, you want to have a, a, a set of consistencies between the different processes, for instance. Nevertheless, with, the, the, with this uh, assume more complex model, um, uh, maybe uh, sometimes don't, they don't have co uh, the complexity inside, meaning if complexity is uh, just going beyond the uh, the mechanistic part of them. Uh, in fact, uh, in, in another recent paper we have, uh, uh, which was, uh, was entitled something like, uh, ha, you are my boundary conditions, uh, you get a view that, uh, for instance, surface water, get uh, hydrologist has this information from uh, the uh, vadozone, and the vadozone has this information from from the groundwater and vice versa. So everyone is the boundary condition of the others. But what happened when we go to try to solve the whole system together is that the boundary condition embeds the real physics of the problem more sometimes the, 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 than the, the equations. So uh, in cobbling the model that way, we, we are losing actually the physics of the model. And we are losing the, the real important thing, which is the complexity of the interaction and the feedbacks. But I don't want to go uh, longer in this discussion, and uh, we, we will have time to go back several other uh, times on um, specific issues relat related to the disclassification. Um, the paper, one in inherited in inheritance of the paper by, by Rakovitz and Clark is that at least we, we can share some views. All models uh, to varying degrees are specially lumped, meaning they are a conceptualization of what is going on at the, micros, uh, at the more micro, finer scale. And so we have to do some uh, 
simplification of statistics of this. This is, is true also for what uh, they are considered the most complicated equations uh, of uh, hydrology, like uh, Navier-Stokes equations, or, for instance, Richard's equations. All models then contain conceptual elements. Uh, where conceptual uh, meaning that there is not an exact derivation uh, of, uh, of the laws from the micro scale, there is not a statistical mechanics so far that say to us how to behave at a complex scale. This is also true also for other fields of physics. Now, statistical mechanics uh, is able to get um, interesting results, but it is not able to get the results we need, for instance, for explaining life. And the same is applied to a certain extent also to hydrology. Um, all model, if well implemented, meaning this well implemented that contains a universe of, of um, you know, thinking, uh, can have a sound physical basic. Physical basis. And um, in my view, the physical basis is that all of them must satisfy the mass and possibly the energy budget, which is not usually included in, in um, recent in the model hydrologists use. And uh, finally, uh, finally, uh, which model we are using? We will see in the next talk what, uh, which model, why we choose models instead of other models. And, uh, but uh, let's say that uh, we have, even if we look at a particular set of models, for instance, PDE's model or ODE's models or um, machine learning models, we, uh, need to have a suitable strategy uh, to apply those models in view of the application we have to do. And we have to renown, um, we, we, cannot, uh, we cannot embrace and say that this model explains all. It doesn't exist yet. And will never exist probably. So I thank you, and if you have questions, you can send to me or send to me by mail or asking now and in, in the following discussion.